Hello everyone, this is Solomon of Solomonic Demons and today we're going to be talking about the history of one of my favorite guitar brands, ESP. Also, we're going to be changing the strings of my LTD Elite Eclipse 1 and we're going to put some 1154s and we're going to be tuning this guitar on C standard and maybe drop B, I don't know, let me see how the things go because mm -hmm. Currently, this guitar it is in drop B, and actually, I used this guitar to record the last album of Solomonic Demons, and I haven't changed the string since then. So yeah, it's about time to take care of this. And like I said, at the same time, we're gonna be talking about the history of ESP, how ESP gained the reputation of making maybe the best guitars that are right now on the market. Yeah. Let's talk about it and why I changed the strings of my guitar. So, in 1975, Isatake Shibuya opened a shop called Electric Sound Products ESP in Tokyo, Japan, which provide custom replacement parts for guitars. At the time, ESP also began making guitars under the ESP and Navigator brand in the Japanese market. ESP replacement parts were first introduced in the USA in 1983 and began crafting custom instruments for local New York artists between 1984 and 1985. Among these artists were Vernon Ray from Living Color, Vinnie Vincent from Kiss and many more. At the same time ESP also introduced the 400 series as the first production line to be distributed in the United States. During the same period, ESP began making the bodies of necks from Kramer guitars and other manufacturers that were using ESP as an OEM, such as Robin guitars, Schecter guitar research, and Dimarcio. Many traits of the Kramer line are still visible, including neck construction and body bevels. In 1985, George Lynch from Dokium discovered ESP while on tour in Tokyo. George Lynch walked into an ESP shop looking for a replacement neck and learned that ESP also built custom guitars. As a result, his famous ESP kamikaze was made. An ESP released the George Lynch Kamikaze as its first signature model. ESP soon introduced the M1 Standard, the M1 Custom, the Horizon Custom, and the Surveyor Base. At this time, ESP based its headquarters in a loft in downtown New York City on 19th Street. The headquarters were moved to the 48th Street in New York City around the famous Music Row. In 1986, the popular demand for ESP guitars in Europe was growing up, and it was in Germany that a store in Dusseldorf, Germany, that was distributing ESP guitars, was given the task for setting up the ESP costume shop in Germany. A complete organization of ESP wholesale and ESP distribution and ESP custom order service was established for Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. This resulted in a consolidation of the ESP distribution network for all local European areas. In the early 1990s, EXP expanded its signature series. There were about 41 signature series of guitars by the early 1990s. In order to fulfill this, the USA replacement parts business was discontinued in order to focus solely on their guitar and bass line production, as well as the custom shop series of guitars. In 1983, ESP moved its headquarters again, but this time all the way to California, to Los Angeles, on the Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood. In 1996, the LTD series was created to produce ESP high-quality products at a more affordable price. Soon after the introduction of the Korean and Indonesian-made LTD lines, ESP stopped selling the majority of its Japanese flagship guitars in the United States due to the high prices involved in exporting guitars to the United States. The long exception was the ESP RT Signature Series. In the early 2000s decade, ESP resumed exporting the standard Japanese-made lines to the United States. 
but increasing the prices comparing to the early 1990s. In 2002, ESP was ranked among the music industry fastest growest company and their artist catalog was growing even more. Already they have James Hetfield, Keir Hammett and even George Lynch that was his first signature player still was with the company. Now it was around this time that Jackson Guitars was sold to Fender, Jackson and another big USA manufacturers, big competitors in the 80s and 90s to ESP start losing signature players and ESP took this opportunity to sign these guitar players. Among these guitar players were Dave Mustaine from Megadeth, Adam Darsky also known as Nergal from Behemoth, Alexi Laio from Children of Bottom, Jeff Hanneman from Slayer and many more. ESP introduced the Exton line beginning to the semi Halo Paramount series. In 2013, ESP introduced the LTD Elite series of guitars. Now, these guitars were made to fulfill the gap between the LTD 1000 series and the ESP standard series of guitars. This sub brand of guitars only lasted for one year, and after this, ESP decided to take them out of the market. Also, the ESP standard series of guitars that were made in Japan were rebranded and the E2 brand of guitars born. ESP decided that the ESP logo only was gonna be used with their custom shop of guitars and the guitars that were made in the United States. Now for the Japanese market, no major changes were made besides taking out the ESP standard series. The Edwards brand and the Grassroots brand remained the same after 2013. And after this, the reputation of ESP only keeps growing. Unlike growing. many others, ESP try to offer more than just knockoffs. They always had made high quality guitars Next year, 2025, ESP is going to be 50 years and we cannot wait to see how the company celebrate their 50 year anniversary. Now, I didn't clean the back of the guitar and that's what we're gonna be doing now. And um, yeah, I mean, that was the story of ESP. I mean, I love uh, my two, LTD Elites, um, like I said, this is my favorite guitar. Uh, my second one, I would say, um, with with my other, oh, I almost put the shit. <laughs> with my other LTD Elite, I mean, made in Japan. Uh, these guitars have a great quality. I love them both. The only thing that I don't like, honestly, are those tuners that these guitars have. Uh, but you know that's something that can be changed and maybe one day I will do it. I really love these guitars uh, I think that ESP gained that quality of craftsmanship over the years and that reputation it is it still stand until today. I mean, I think that ESP makes the best guitars in the world. Um, um, I love Gibson, I love Fender, I love Jackson, I love a lot of brands, but for me, ESP are the company that make the best guitars out there. And well, hopefully you guys like this video. Thank you so much for watching. This was Solomon of Solomonic Demons. Thanks, take care, and bye.